times you know.
Chattanooga. Let's celebrate. Today is going to be a wonderful day.
of Chattanooga. I'm Amanda Adamson, and I serve as the president of your board of trustees. I want to thank you all for joining us this morning, and also thank you, Landis, for sharing your musical talents with us. Today, we're pleased to welcome back Reverend Sean O'Shea as our guest speaker. Active in primarily New Thought venues, Sean and his wife Lori travel from their home base in Cookville, Tennessee to share the good news with their songs and their stories. I'd also like to welcome our friends who are watching today live on Facebook. Thank you for inviting us into your homes. Be sure to like us and leave a comment. We love that and we appreciate you. Do we have any newcomers with us this morning? Okay, just the home crowd. Unity of Chattanooga is part of Unity Worldwide Ministry, which states that unity is a global, inclusive, spiritual community that offers practical, uplifting resources to help people of all faiths apply positive spiritual practices in their lives. <coughs> unity offers us an approach to spirituality rather than closed, dogmatic, teachings. We believe that the presence of God, the presence of God lives in, through, and as each of us. We are now being called to live more fully in this presence. Whatever your race, sexual orientation, gender identity, and the ethnicity or culture, you are celebrated here. We are more because you are here. At Unity of Chattanooga, we encourage people to think for themselves, to explore, to question, and try out our spiritual teachings for themselves. We know that unity can make a difference in your lives as it has ours. As Keith stated, our beloved Terry Loveless moved on to his next adventure this week. Uh, Penny sent out an email notifying people, and one of the responses she got back was this. Terry is now the official greeter in heaven and will be hugging everyone just like he did here at Unity of Chattanooga. So in honor of Terry this morning, let's get up and greet each other like he did with I love you, a hug, or just a simple smile.
that always greets us that's there early in the computer. He's so sweet. I didn't even know the man's name at the time. I couldn't remember it. But he's just so sweet. And I didn't say goodbye to him. And it was bothering me that I didn't say goodbye to him. And so I went back in, and, and he said, oh, did you forget something? And I said, I did. I forgot to say goodbye to you. And I walked over, and he had tears in his eyes, which then set me off. And the two of us stood there, crying, embraced. Nothing else was said. And I got back in the car, and of course, Laurie knows me best. She's like, what just happened? And I said, God just happened. So carry that with you this week and always. Thank you, Karen. Help me out with the meditation. I know I'm out of order, but Penny's used to me being out of order. <laughs> I want to start us off with the meditation because um, I need some vibes. <laughs> you are a beautiful human being, and this is a about it. 
All I really knew about it was uh, most of my Irish Catholic classmates were complaining about having to give up something. And they would ask me, what are you giving up? What? We didn't, we didn't really follow, follow that. My I Irish Catholic dad wasn't into a lot of the ritualistic things. So we didn't really talk about Lent. We didn't participate in Lent. But I know that it was a big part of that particular faith. Giving something up. What was interesting about it is it seemed to be some kind of almost like self-punishment, right? It was, oh, uh, my dad's giving up beer, right? Because my dad loves his beer, but he's going to stop drinking beer for X amount of days. He's going to give it up for Lent. But man, on that 41st day, dad's going to down a case of beer, right? Make up for old times. Maybe other people would give up chocolate. Oh, who am I kidding? Nobody's going to give up chocolate. That's, that's just silly. That's cruel. But there are certain things that it, it seems, especially in the Irish Catholic faith, that you give up as some sort of self-punishment. But really, as silly as I thought it was at the time, I can now look at a number of different faiths and actually honor Lent, however it is celebrated. If it is a practice that reminds you to be mindful of God, I say bring it. I celebrate it. Some of you know, I've told the story before of uh, a Muslim neighbor that I was friendly with. I had the privilege of learning more about Ramadan. I had no idea what Ramadan was. Irish Catholic kid from Massachusetts doesn't know anything about Ramadan, I assure you. But I, I learned. And there were so many similarities. He said, we fast. We don't eat during the day. We don't even you know, have anything besides a little bit of water. And there were, there were just so many similarities. It was an observation of his faith and a reminder of his faith. And I caught myself feeling very respectful of his beliefs and then remembering that, oh, maybe I should be a little respectful of the ones I grew up with. Some of you, well, actually, let's make this more, I, I'm not a lecturer. <laughs> this isn't a classroom. This is a conversation, okay? This is a conversation, okay? Okay. Okay, okay that's really better. I feel more comfortable now. How many of you practice Lent by giving something up that you like or enjoy? Oh, so we will? No, not one. Oh, that's cool. All right. I totally, I totally thought at least a third of you would, yeah, not, you know, I gave up alcohol or I gave up spaghetti or, you know, whatever the heck your, your vice is. Well, then perhaps this whole talk is going to be pretty much wasted on you. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I should just talk about something else. I don't know. I guess maybe you already know that Lent can be giving up things that we are not necessarily anxious to go back to when the period of Lent ends. Yes? That is a very useful spiritual practice. Anyone have any thoughts on what could be set aside for Lent? I'd actually like to hear them. Fear. Judgment. Judgment. I'm going to set aside being judgmental for Lent. That's a good one. 
Black. Black. Ooh. I'm going to give up the concept of lack. I'm going to be focused on prosperity. But on the 41st day, I'm just going to forget about that and go back, right? Just, any, anyone else? Please. Worry. 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 Oh, wow. Yeah. But I'm worried that might not work. <laughs> All the tricks we do, please. Criticism. Criticism. Wow. Here. Self-concern. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Finding fault, right? Please. Self-doubt. Mm. <laughs> what did you say? Self-doubt. Boy, that's a good one. That was for me. Margaret. Anger. Anger. Oh, man. Yeah, but they were wrong. <laughs> and I have a right to be mad. Right? Don't we hang on to that? And they didn't say they were sorry enough. So, there you go. I love it. I love that. My friend who's 91 with Parkinson's, she decided this year, she's a cradle passer. She decided to add to, she can add to, and she's doing the hours of prayer with the group that comes in through her media. So she said, I'm going to continue. This has been awesome. 90s so and Parkinson and planning her future. How fantastic is that? She's setting aside any negativity at all, right? God, it's beautiful. I decided to actually read up on Lent because I thought maybe I should know something about this thing before I talk about it. Not that that's ever stopped me before. <laughs> But I read this from a, a website, and I'm sorry, I forgot the source, but Lenten sacrifice, right? Sacrifice, it's, it's kind of funny, but you, you all know better. Lenten sacrifice is a spiritually motivated, voluntary renunciation of a pleasure or luxury that most Christians give up for the observance of Lent. Lent is a season of 40 days, not counting Sundays, which begins on Ash Wednesday and ends on Holy Saturday. Lent comes from the Anglo-Saxon word lengthen, which means lengthen, and re refers to the lengthening days of spring. By the way, daylight savings is coming up. Yes. <laughs> Sight. Uh, the 40 days represents the time Jesus spent in the wilderness with his self-reflection. Lent is a time of repentance, fasting, and preparation for the coming of Easter. So there is a big difference between giving up and letting go of something. And you all I think presented wonderful ideas of letting go of various things. The difference being, I'm giving up, I'm, I'm setting aside something I love doing. I like to wash my car. I don't know why, don't even ask me, but that's my thing. I enjoy it. It's a Zen-like experience for me. If I had to go 40 days without washing my car, I can't even imagine. But it would certainly would make me mindful because every day I get thinking, I can't wait till day 41. <laughs> That's one way, but the other is to just give up on something that you really want to continue on with. Diabetes gave me the opportunity to stop eating so much crap. Right? And when the 41st day comes about, or when my numbers go down, which I have one of those thingies clipped into my arm, and it reads to my cell phone, by the way, to tell me my sugar at every moment. So cool. It's amazing. But I'm not going back, folks. I'm not going to give this suit away until it's time. Some might say it's already out of style, but hey, 
I won't. It's okay. I can get away with something like that. <laughs> I found a couple of uh, kind of nice quotes about Lent that I want to share. There's a difference between giving up and letting go. Letting go of what draws me away from God instead of closer to God. Of holding my palms upward, holding all things lightly and given to God to do as he wills. Thomas A. Kempis, The Imitation of Christ, advocated making a regular practice of letting go to sum up, dear friend of mine, unclench your fists and let everything fly out of your hands. Clean yourself up nicely and stay faithful to your creator. Wow. That's even better than stopping beer for 40 days, isn't it? How cool is that? From Catherine Doherty. Lent is a time of going very deeply into ourselves. What is it that stands between us and God? Between us, our brothers and sisters. Between us and life, the life of the Spirit. Whatever it is, let us relentlessly tear it out without a moment's hesitation. That's powerful. Another from Morgan Harper Nichols. Hold on, dear friend, for this is not the end. You have traveled so far and have worked so hard. Carry on with courage and do not give up. And not because things will be easy, but because these seeds you are sowing matter. And they will grow in time if you do not lose heart. God refuses to give up, and we who are enlisted to be fellow workers with God know that the only reason we continue is that death did not have the last word. That Good Friday was not the end of the story. And that's from Desmond Tutu. Lastly, Lent is a time for discipline, for confession. For honesty, not because God is mean or fault-finding or finger-pointing, but because he wants us to know the joy of being cleaned out and ready for all the good things he now has in store. Did you hear that? Cleaned out and ready for all the good things he has in store. Are you ready to receive? Are you ready to receive? Do you accept that gift? Are you prepared to let go of whatever is holding you? back from feeling worthy of the immense, immeasurable, amazing gifts as individuals, as a spiritual community, do you feel ready? Yes. Hello. <laughs> Is this thing on? <laughs> Let's try this again. <laughs> it might be me. It might be my whiteness. I don't know. Do you feel? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> do you do you feel ready? Yes. 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 Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay. Now there's some really important things. I had one to give up. <sighs> This is going to hurt a lot of you. The need to be right. Oh, that's a 
invite all of you to come up here and throw pebbles into this plant because it's good. great. If that's working and you believe it is so, then it shall be so. If you believe not eating pizza for 40 days will remind you to be more prayerful or closer to God, then I applaud it and you should keep doing it. I'm only suggesting that maybe during this time we could use something more productive so that we don't have to stop doing it on the 41st day. That we can continue it into the future and enjoy the spiritual growth, not only as individuals, but as husband and wife, as partners, as co-congregants. That's a big one. This is not always easy to be a co-congregant. And you're about to undergo some changes and some shifts and some moving around and some stuff. You need to get centered into a place of love and understanding and patience with each other and knowing that God has our backs. And I am looking forward to absolutely wonderful things coming for you. We are calling that forth. We are accepting that gift right now as a community. Yes. 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 A couple things about Lent to wrap up. I was going to give up lunch meat for Lent, but I just couldn't quit cold turkey. Uh, thank you, I'll be here all week. I'm giving up spreadsheets for Lent. Excel Lent. Thank you, thank you. There should be a holiday where we remember all the borrowed items we are given out. We've given out that have never been returned. We'll call it Lent. <laughs> and then, and then I'm giving up negativity for Lent. We'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> <laughs> that one made me laugh out loud. And then to wrap it all up, the same person probably said, for Lent this year, I'm just giving up. <laughs> and that person obviously does not go to unity in Chattanooga. 
And we wouldn't let that happen, would we? Thank you for letting me be here with you. It is always a pleasure and an honor, and it's not a bad drive. So come up and see me if I'm not down here seeing you, okay? And again, Marty sends your love. Thank you.
they own a beautiful and peaceful property called Dragonfly Landing. Not only is it their home office and creative space for their works, their home is available to rent as a countryside getaway, or can be used as a mini retreat center. So, just FYI there. Um, I want to thank all the people behind the scenes, Laura Miller, and we're very happy to see a couple people interested in signing up to learn the video streaming with these. <laughs> She's clapping. <laughs> um, because you do, you miss out when you're, when you're constantly streaming, so it's nice to kind of uh, spread the wealth and, and uh, get to participate and be present um, and listen sometimes. So it is a big commitment if you do this pretty much every week like Lori has been doing. But, you, but it won't you be. You don't because have to be. It doesn't have to be a big commitment for the people. No, no, that is exactly right. We're just asking maybe one Sunday a month, one Sunday every two months, whatever Whenever works out. Whenever you happens. want to. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you want to. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, several of you have asked, and at the moment we're currently unaware of any plans for memorial service for Terry Loveless. But as soon as we know something, we will pass on the information to you. I believe that's being handled by his sister and brother, and, and I know that we'll be a welcome part of that, so we'll let you know. Um, next week, we welcome back one of our own, Kelly Thompson, who will speak on our concepts of God. Um, also, I want to remind you on the front table, there's uh, for our new property at 105 McBrien Road, <laughs> um, which we hope to be meeting in on Sunday, April 7. Um, there's plenty of volunteer opportunities coming up there also. And it's just a little bit, just, a, you know, 10 minutes here, 30 minutes there, and it makes it all work so much better. Um, well, I think that's it, and thank you so much for joining us, and I hope that you can join us for fellowship and food, and now if you please stand and join us in our peace song.